I think a bit of a change of wardrobe is in order because I don't think a dress covered in feathers and blood is very appetizing, although I will keep the wings for my pain. Channel my rage, and every time I do that, I leave the menu. Why do I do? I do not know. Anyway, with that nightmare out of the way and its broken shenanigans and things that shouldn't be a thing that's actually intended to be, we've got two new things available for us that actually do not require anything. You can see why I don't like the death wishes with what just went down. Thankfully, I've got a good thing to chill afterwards. Let's go for a montage and grab all three snatch coins in Alpine Skyline, and we're going to be warping around a little bit in order to get some swanky shorts. You actually cannot see it in this particular shot, but the token is actually at the start at Goat Village. Just choose the free roam option in order to start at the Goat Village. We've got to start by climbing pretty much upwards to the windmill zipline, the blue one. But instead of taking the zipline, we want to be at this house, adjacent. Sorry, my, my commentary is a little bit janky here because I'm doing it live and... It, you got to pretty much stand on this, and then you got to double jump, lunge, flip out of it, and if Hat Kid grabs the ledge or climbs and vaults up, then you're good. If not, then you were basically a pixel off, and it's a little bit annoying. Nope, didn't make it that time. we got to get up that ledge. Yeah, this doesn't feel like you're supposed to do this, but this is where the, the token is located. Oh, I didn't flip out of it, so I didn't get the extra height. Oh, come on! That's not... That's not it! Oh, come on! You stop at the edge! Why? Why? Again, basic mechanics breaking. This is supposed to be relaxing, just collecting a couple of items. It's just the position is very stupid. Seriously, I should make that! Why don't I? Get up there! What's wrong with you? Hack it, please. You keep reaching the ledge. You're just not grabbing it. I've seen so many people get this token. And this is how you get it. So why can't I do it? Come on, you should make it. Why don't you? Come on, you were above the ledge. You... Camera, please stop imploding. I just stop at the edge. You do. You are at the edge. Your hand is on the edge, but you refuse to grab and you refuse to climb up. Why? This is a stupid token. I am getting mad. I am getting. Get on the pike, Jesus. You are up there! Oh my lord, why? I like how I say this is gonna be calm and like as easy collectible. I knew that the first one was gonna be a pain, but I practiced this like earlier and I was not having this much trouble. And if you check any other videos, this is pretty much the way everybody sees it to be done because you're so close. And yet this is so goddamn precise that I'm always falling short and it drives me insane. It probably doesn't help, but I just came off of the previous Death Wish, which you have to do to get this available, by the way. Look at that! I'm sliding leftwards while climbing the wall, and Hat Kid's hand is on the very ledge, but she just can't seem to grab the ledge and pull herself up. She just lets gravity take her. Why? Again, basic mechanics break because of Death Wish. Why do I use speed while climbing up the wall? I can't influence that! Just get up there! What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? If I drag out the jumps, I'm lower. If I do it too quick, I can't make it to the wall. What do you want me to do?
Two very boring minutes later. Finally! Jesus Christ, why does the basic mechanics not work? That is too goddamn precise. Remember, this would the level it was made before. Are you serious? You didn't wall climb. I just made it up there, and I tried to go to the next ledge, and that kid didn't wall climb on that wall at all until after she fell. Guess I gotta do this stupid jump again. Well, you know what? Screw you. I've already done it. That's how you're supposed to get up there. I will show another video clip. Oh, no, I'll show. I'll link a video in this in the comments or description card, whatever. That's how you're supposed to do it. And now you climb up the wall like you're supposed to. Why did you fall? One long, angry line later. Good lord. Right. Now that we are up here, we can go around. We can follow it around so we can climb up again. Once we can climb up again, we'll be able to get up a little bit higher so that we are able to reach the token at hand. I didn't expect to have so many issues with this particular coin, not token, coin, they act like tokens, fair enough, but it shouldn't have been placed up here because that wall jump is annoying and yet the very next one buggered me up after I finally made it. And I practiced this and I didn't have that many issues because I thought I was nailing it and then look what happens, I record and I get mad and then it's all shit. That's one token. Let's go get another one. The second token is at the third layer of the lava cake. All you gotta do is get to the end of layer three right before hopping into the cannon. The token will be on that post right beside off, off, off a little bit. All you gotta do is double jump and lunge and then you can pick it up. A lot easier to get than the previous one. Five minutes later. Okay, so we're now at the fourth checkpoint of the windmill. What we got to do is pretty much head back up along the houses, but we got to go one house beyond than where one of our collectibles was at before in order to go grab ourselves our token. So let's hop around over this way so we can get on the roof of this house. The reason why I'm actually being at certain positions in certain levels in order to come back is so that it's a lot easier for you guys to find the tokens. I believe if we come up this way, there he is, it's all the way up there on that plateau. So now we've got to somehow make it from over here. So if we do a double jump and lunge, that's not actually enough to make it. So what do we do? Well, what we got to do is come over this way, jump over here to this set of trees, and then, if we do a double jump, lunge, and cancel, there we go, we get our final token. I apologise for my <laughs> outbursts during that first token, that is definitely the hardest one to get, the other two are pips in comparison, but it's mostly because of that one ledge, the first ledge from the main level, is the only issue with that location of that first coin on the goat village. But for whatever reason as well, it's if Hat Kid decides to go full force and vault over. But then, uh, the other wall decided to not wall climb on, so I fell anyway, which is why I cheated. I hope you can understand why I cheated there, but I did do it legit first time and then it broke on me after. Uh, the death wishes are killing me, man. I hate that. Seriously, Alpine's probably the worst for these death wishes. I mean, we haven't had to deal with any speed running, but that's going to change in a minute. Because that's my main criticism, well, other than the controls not working, but there we are. But it's like, we got the hiking shorts. We will swap to these. The reason being is that if we actually leave the map now, we are Banjo. Which is kind of funny as well, because he's in Smash as well. <laughs> but yeah, we are Banjo. We we, we got the shorts, we got the, the, the jacket that pretty much makes us look like a bear. He even got his necklace if you look there. I mean, the necklace isn't the same necklace, but it's a timepiece. But that would be where Banjo's necklace would be. And we got a blue backpack. We're friggin' Banjo, boys. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of good considering that, you know, there's a collective on and all that. There used to be a mod, but once again, it was... In fact, actually, the mod is still available for download if you just want it earlier instead of going through the pain that I've had to. But, you know... It's actually part of the main game, so you will be able to access this on consoles as well, especially the Switch once it comes out. 
But enough about that. I mentioned speedrunning. Look what the next one is. <laughs> oh, end me now. Okay, so it's the same as any other rift collapse. This one, obviously, you have to beat with 30 more seconds remaining. And you have to grab all the rift ponds if you fail three times. You've got to, you know, wait five minutes in order to try again. Obviously, this will be post-commentated if there's any. There's not really much to say, other than the fact that I can say right now is that I cannot get both stipulations at once. Normally, I go for the one with 30 seconds more remaining first, and then I try to go for all ponds so I don't have to wait for the five-minute uh, cooldown. So, other than that, I guess we just enjoy music of the winning run as well as some failures that I will inevitably have at this point. That's cheeky, man! Oh, come on, really? I took another death already? Even after I hesitated thinking I could recover, no, you just have to spar to me. Thanks for that. Oh, for f I was about to say. What? No, what the hell? Get up. What the hell? Get. I do not believe these shenanigans that are happening! I am. Look, I am on a flat surface! Why am I falling down? Ex no, I'm getting up here before I have to wait five minutes. This is ridiculous. I'm getting fed up with that. That's what's supposed to happen. Why is my wall climbing not working today? I'm getting so fed up with that recently. What's happening? Five minutes later. All right, so excusing literally all of the wall climbing shenanigans I've had to deal with up to this point, I've always had to, like, at least lose a couple of lives to get back into the swing of things, even after practicing, because, you know, I'm having trouble prior, and then that makes me rusty when it actually gets to the speed run at the point of the video. I have decided to actually clip in the, uh, once again, Silver Gunner Rift Collapse Remix, this time it's a uh, mesh between the original game's Rift Collapse theme with size Gundam style. Oh, I did say I wasn't going to play this one in main game because I'm talking over it right now and, you know, sigh, the uh, YouTube reasons. So I thought I'd talk over it for this point, but at least then I can still, you know, have it playing because, you know, I've got the mod in game. So, that's pretty cool. So, the problem with this one, other than wall climbing, obviously, is that you've got to know where you are spatially. Most of the ponds are up and around and all everywhere, but they're not so spread out as they are in the original. So, you can actually keep an eye on where you are, because it's like just a more, more of a linear pathway than anything else. As long as you just follow the one path, you don't really have to loop around on yourself. Other than this point where, after doing the swinging on here and going to the one on the red house down there, if you don't do the jump right, you might have to damage boost in the lava. Luckily, I bounced off of the wall so that I was able to angle myself correctly, and I luckily landed on that zip line. I wasn't aiming for that, I was aiming for the platform. Now, at this point, I actually only need four ponds to go to the final layer, so I speed up here because this is all kind of fluff. Remember, I said I was going to go for um, with 30 plus seconds remaining, and then I was going to go and fin uh, get all the ponds and finish. So I'm not going to completely commentate over the next run, I'll just uh, chime in for when something bad happens. And there is a little bit of a live reaction because I kind of panicked at the very end, but I had way more time than I thought I needed, which we'll you all see.
Okay, as you saw there, I didn't actually get to hook shot, but I have to come down anyway for that particular pond. But if that if you do it in the opposite order, you can just climb up and grab it again. It just makes nailing the jump that I did before a little bit more difficult. So I just went straight for the pond instead. This house could be a little bit annoying with the crows instead. Some people actually run all the way through it and then climb out from the top. Personally, I make my way backwards, which I got stuck under the thing. But that's not a problem because I would have had to pretty much jump from the edge of the water to th this particular area of the nest here. And this bit is obviously not sped up because we actually do need to grab the ponds. Now, what's coming up is a bit of a problem where, even though I mess up, I had a lot of time to spare and I could have done it in a single run. Oh, what? I got stuck! No! Shit! No! I got stuck again! What the hell? I got stuck twice in a row! That's not fair! I might still make it. But that's not fair. Come on. Really? That's how this is going to happen. So, you may notice that I put an extra timer on screen for when I accidentally messed up and got stuck on the little rim of the archway we just jumped back on. Add that time to our finishing time, once I grab the uh, time piece, and I probably would have had all three objectives, all three stamps, in a single run. Okay, I do not know what happened there, maybe with a bit more practice, because I had a lot of time saved there despite messing up the route a bunch of times. Where's the- Why- Okay, why was the timepiece so high? That's another question. But yeah, uh, normally, uh, I- Yeah, um, I, if I could refine that just a little bit and not mess up, I could have potentially had both of those in one run. I still had 40 seconds remaining. Alright, so obviously it's already gone bang, but that is that one complete. Now we can pretty much do normal things. I, I know I said that with the Snatcher Coins Alpine Skyline, I technically forgot about the first one, but at the same time I did practice it and didn't have enough issues. This time I had all the issues, but hey, now we do have yet another Community Rift, and I'd rather do this before the camera tourist, and you'll see why, because it's a perfect way to end off the video, once again not having the ma this map as the end card. The Community Rift, the Mountain Rift. Same thing as before, it's a purple rift, collective rift pond, and all story pages. That's pretty much all it is, it's just a purple time rift. Grab everything. Collect a pond. Th th what you expect. <laughs> Alright, we can probably chill out now. I mean, I'll probably not try not to take too long through this, but... Yeah. Oh, oh by the way, there's actually something that I want to talk about, actually, that's uh, a little bit weird. Even though that the HUD, uh, the, the purple uh, HUD mod is saying that we only had one page in this area, but I picked it up. Because this area is actually quite close to the next area spatially, the collection hat, not often will I use this in the Let's Play, as I've already mentioned, but it's actually detecting one of the pages in the next area. You can imagine when I was planning out my route that that kind of messed me up, so... Hmm. Alright, so that's the first area done. Basically, it's Alpine Skyline again. It's That's basically all it is. There's not really anything else to mention other than it's just Alpine Skyline. All we got to do is just grab everything as per usual. So, yeah, I, do, I don't really have many uh, thoughts about this one. The next one, the last one, the, of the three that are in the map, there are three, because we already said that there were three missing, despite not having any more... Uh, timepieces to grab, even though they still flag them off with timepieces, they're just not timepieces in general, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's not really much to say about this one in particular, other than, perfect timing for a segue, I've got the right mask on, we've got Dweller enemies that have never been introduced before. How do I manage that, really? I just did a speedrun and now I do a stupid mistake like that. <sighs> I don't know what to say about that, but yes, we have Dweller Crows, which weren't Dweller affected before, but now they are. So, we've got a little bit of a change here from the norm, and of course, if you haven't got your hat active, they are immune, but they can still hurt you. My hat keeps going off as soon as the homing attack's about to hit them. 
That's a little bit bad timing there, but oh well. I will attack all these things, I will kill them, because they could probably cause issues for me, but for the most part, if you're using homing attacks, you can very rarely get two in at once. I was about to jump there when I shouldn't have, oh, that would have been a dumb mistake. Stay down here for the moment. We gotta kill all enemies to get this one. We haven't found any of the uh, pages yet for this particular sector. And like I said, I'm not going to use the collection hat, I just wanted to bring that up, because when planning my route and the, the that, that hat was introduced as a mod, and then I thought, well, you know what, that would be pretty helpful to, uh, to sort out. Oh, and by the way, a lucky emblem. Just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, that's basically a hidden Mickey right there. And remember, it's like, by the time I was actually getting into the knee-deep of these uh, death wishes for, you know, what for recording right now basically um when i was starting to actually like knuckle down on all these before um the second dlc came out the nyakuza metro dlc um i was pretty much playing kingdom hearts free at that point and that became a thing an actual collectible and <laughs> yeah so every time you see like a mickey symbol it's actually a collectible you just got to snap a picture of it with your camera and there you go i mean i technically already have done that i'll probably like show that at some point but i've already shown the location of it itself so there you go just press stop <laughs> just press pause and it's all good so we're missing one pawn one thing i know where they are we're pretty much still going on a pretty much all the way around this place we got to get up there how am i missing that how did i miss how do i keep jumping over that spring that many times I'm taking stupid damage for no reason. <laughs> Seriously though, how do I manage that? The, it, the beginning was right behind this ridge. That's why we were able to see that uh, page before we were anywhere near it. Let me get back up to where we were. Actually, no, no I don't. I can actually just take a different route because I can just come over this way and hook shot, so it's fine. Let's get back over here and this time not keep jumping over the spring because I couldn't turn the camera angle when the camera angle wouldn't let me see what I'm doing. Right. Let's hop over here. There's more dweller enemies, so let's, uh... I was hoping to land on the floor so I could swing, but that didn't happen. I was about to say, I wasn't hitting them for a second there, that was a bit weird. But yeah, dweller enemies are pretty much the gimmick for this. That's, there's not really much else to say on the matter, really. I've missed the page again. I did this last time. I think I know where it is. Yep, I'm a Muppet. It's around here. That's why I didn't see it, even though I was looking around the entire areas, because I just started climbing without thinking. And I'm not thinking because my mind's been frazzled by what I've had to deal with today. Yeah, this is all in one day, by the way. I don't want to split my... Well, unless it really gets bad, but we're pretty much into the meat of most of the death wishes now. So, yeah, I completely forgot about that one behind the thing. I knew where it was, I just had to go cut over there to go get it, so... Alright, so we're in the next area now, and yeah, the music's still nice and peaceful like it was before with the Alpine Skyline rift that we pretty much just ran through, but, you know, more remixes and memes. I actually do have the game style remix, I can't remember if I, if we actually, yeah, we did get that out of the rift, or let you hats off to you, but, um, didn't want that to play just in case if there were some issues, because, you know, it's, it's high, you know, I mean, this, I main Wario Land, that's pretty cool, so... <laughs> Is there really an issue? I've got the wrong mask on again. Why do I? Mask, whatever. You know what I mean. Lingo. I'm just used to having the sprint hat on. Can I grab this? Thank you. Okay. So, anything around here? No. Okay. So, let's swing over to... I was about to say, my hookshot wasn't going to go off there, but then it did. But that's when I let go of the button, and now I'm in a freefall. Yeah, at least this area is uh, very generous with its health ponds. It probably also don't help that I'm using a mod weapon so the hookshot doesn't actually come out the umbrella. <laughs> that probably don't help with my, uh, because I'm, as I'm talking and the volume on the TV's down a bit, I'm not hearing the clink of it blinking or shooting, so that probably don't help, but... I want to use the Soul Eater. Gosh darn it. It's kind of fitting for what we're going through. Alright, so we went through there. There wasn't much going on that way, we pretty much just did a loop around, except for the fact we haven't been this way yet, so let's go do that. Takes us back to the beginning. Fair enough. Let's not go that way. <laughs> I even did. I actually didn't mean to do what I just did there. That was kind of stylish, though. So stylish points for me. 
which is nice because I just did a speed run and even though I died a couple of times I still pretty much nailed it and improved upon my personal time which I'm quite chuffed about. I think we need to actually get on top of here but hookshot in this will make that a little bit easier. Yep, because there is a page up there. Let's go grab that. That's one that I always seem to miss unless I'm higher up and I get to see it a lot better. And I can go back of it this way. Go get this pawn. Get that health. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see what we've done. We've done like pretty much one one of those coins is definitely not my favourite just to the, its location, but I didn't have trouble in practice before the video's recording. Not before the series recording or anything, but before the video's recording. So it just kind of screwed me over right after I did one of the missions that I just absolutely loathe. And even though the, the, still the bomb's going off, but killing the, the crows is, a is apparently your fault, so you get hurt. It's that's that's stupid. That shouldn't have been an intended thing, and it is because the snatcher's tip is pretty much telling you don't let it happen. And it's like, well, that's not really fair. Why should that be my responsibility? I'm has nothing to do with me. I'm not the killer. So. That's just, that's just my personal thoughts. Just making sure I haven't missed a page, even though I'm getting a nagging feeling that I have again. I'm back here again. <laughs> Gotta get up that way. So let's go do that. Oh, there's the page. It's at the very beginning. That's why I'm get, being a very stupid moron. At least you see this one. You can't blame me. I've been beaten today. <laughs> But hey, I still did it for you guys, so that's the that's all that matters. As long as it is like the let that like it's still 100% in or 110% in this case in some way. I mean, up to this point, we're probably at 107%. Aha! I mean, think about it. Even if this was mo uh, like um, developed by the actual creators at Gears for Breakfast, then it feel it just feels like a natural part of the game. But if this was actually a mod created level that was put into the DLC because it was so well made, you wouldn't even know if this was actually like mod created or not, to be honest, because th that's how good this th this thing's quality is. Okay, if I remember what this is, these are glowing green, but they don't actually mean anything. Yeah, I just checked the beginning. I'm getting paranoid. I don't want to be cutting around and missing things that I've already missed. But yeah. These green lamps don't actually mean anything. They're just green for the sake of uh, the Dweller theme. You would think that you would have to like activate your Dweller mask and then swing. But no. They, or they have like a certain bubble or something that you have to counteract in order to swing on them. But no. They're just aesthetic purposes. They're, they're not the, the small little bells that we have to worry about. They're just green for the sake of being green. Which may be an indicator that it is actually a mod as soon as I mention that it may not be. Because it's so like in line with the tone of the game itself i mean maybe uh, the uh previous uh community rift that we went through the rhythm studio that definitely feels more mod related because that's like a thing that you wouldn't not normally expect and thank you magnet badge for grabbing that for me that's awesome just have a little look upon these uh poles here there we are we're all good on this front yeah this one's a little bit more easier to manage in, in my opinion like but where where all the collectibles are. I think this is actually the final layer, isn't it? Because considering how many pages we have, probably. I did not do that right at all, did I? Let's whack that again. So we have all the time in the gosh darn world. Ha! What? You didn't wall climb! Excuse me? Alright, let me not lunge. Well, it would have worked if the bubble didn't regress. There we go. I It's because I lunged, it kind of counteracted it. That's fine. Got that one. You'd think that that would have been a page or something, because that was a little bit more challenging than most, but nope. Right, so I'm just going to make it the easy way, come back down to the exit in order to bounce up here. I actually like how they have a little bit of a wooden plank there, so it's like, yeah, if you want to run, this is where you can align yourself. Nope, nope, I didn't do that right, I thought my hat was available. Hat, mask, what have you. Where do I want to go next? I think I'll go this way. Yeah, this one you can kind of just do in any order. It's like, I mean, th most of them are just like that little sandbox areas with a few linearity areas going off. But in this particular case, there's not really any right or wrong way to do it. I mean, I do admit that I messed up in the, uh, uh, what was it, the Rhythm Studio by taking the exit way on the final layer first. That was my bad. But I always do that, and I don't know why. It's just 
Maybe it's because that was the first time I went through it and I went in that direction. I actually had to go through it again because I fell into the exit. But it's probably just the order I'm used to, so... Okay, so we're getting there, slowly. We still have three ponds to grab. There's one up there. There's one all the way over here. Let's go for this one. I know I'm not being very methodical about this, but it's just like, it's nice and calming, you know. This is actually a very unstressful one to worry about, so I'm very thankful for that. Especially since what we've had to deal with so far to unlock these particular ones, so it's a... It's a, it's a nice balance if you can get past them, that if, that big, big if, because obviously you won't unlock them otherwise, of course, peace and tranquility is there, but for the sake of the walkthrough, I would like to show you how far I can push myself. It's just, most of it don't feel like it's my fault for the fails, really. Also, this is an easy way to cheese this particular segment, when you can just come down from above, and that's on the other side of the area. In fact, we're back near the beginning. So, I'm going to have to head back this way. I think I'm going to go around this way back down. Make my way across back to the other side of the level. We've only got one more pond and one more uh, storybook cave. I mean, I, I know that it may feel like it's cheating because of the mod, but it, like for the HUD and everything, but it feels like it should be there. That's like a never call it your life thing. It feels like that's like a missing thing. Like how uh, the hero path of Breath of the Wild shouldn't have been DLC. It should have been part of the game as an update, so you can check where you've been, because an open world game with that feature is really helpful. Why is that, like, locked behind a paywall? Uh, same goes for, uh, well, what was it? Well, maybe the the Master Cycle as well, but that is technically DLC. The Korok Mask definitely should have been part of the uh, main game, but even so, that shouldn't have been, like, part of the main game in that kind of sense. It should have been, like, you could take a picture of a Korok and then use the, uh, Sheikah Map feature. Wait, what was that? Did I just see a chest I missed somehow? Oh, crap. Hang on. I think I've paranoided myself. I know I've got all the collectibles in this particular area, but still. I think I've paranoided myself, if you get what I mean. Oh no, it was a spring. Okay. It looked like a chest from this distance, but I've, I know I've already been up there, but I kind of... I, yeah, I kind of self-duped myself, as I've already mentioned. Alright, so we're in the final area, but as you can probably tell from the HUD, which I already know where it's in here, our last page is right on top of the archway there. You could look all the way around the place, but you can actually climb on these, so that's what you want to do. Just hop up here, upon spawn, just hold the camera up, and that's our final page, so we got all that sorted as well. That will probably be the actual main end card. I've said that some the candle was going to be the end card, but I forgot that. Like, the story itself, so we'll have that. But the, the, the next mission will lead into that, and you'll see why as we get another three stamps. In fact, we're going to get another three stamps before we even end the video off. Oh yeah, another three stamps. Look at that, 75. I just went from halfway to three quarters of the way today. <laughs> I've recorded two videos in a row, and to be honest, that's been about four hours of recording. These videos do take a lot out of me to just plan, practice, and even then, I gotta record it. So, yeah. But we can finish off with something that will see the free stamps in the next episode, as well as the prize, because we are ending this off with a montage. Because, I mean, I'm just gonna take shitty photos for the Let's Play. But, however, I can show you the pictures that both me and Aaron have got while going through this during our practice sessions. This, these are very easy ones. Camera tourist, you're basically playing Pokemon Snap. Snap a picture of eight different enemies, snap a single picture with three different enemies in it, and snap a picture of every boss. I believe it counts both of the birds, as in either the conductor or DJ Grooves is the same, because they are. But that means the five, that means like all five bosses in the game, including the toilets, because remember, each chapter has a technical boss level, those entities are bosses, but the spores in our point skyline do count, because that is the boss entity for that level, and the toilet also counts as a boss, because that's basically the mid-boss of, uh, of Subcon Forest, because you have the Snatcher and the, um, and the toilet. Then you have the Mafia boss, then you have the uh, Moustache Girl, and then you have the Spore, and then you have one of the two presenters. So that's that. So, enjoy this uh, little montage of images. I'm going to go do this in my own time for the Let's Play, but you're going to see the images that we took a lot better. 
and yeah so i'll get this done quickly in between videos and i'll see you guys next time see you guys later The Nomads The residents of the Alps lived alone on the mountaintops until a goat on his pilgrimage arrived at his goal. He had followed the stars to find this place. The Nomads assisted the goats on setting up the zipline network for easy travel across the skyline and its many new landmarks. They even built a birdhouse for any passing birds, and for farming eggs. And the Twilight Bell was constructed to honour the goat gods for their mystical guidance. The nomads and the goats were never alone again.